This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. This is my final show before I am out all of next week to move. So wanted to go out on a high note, hopefully have some good stuff for you for today. And thankfully, Major League Baseball obliged because we have got a massive slate on tap for tonight. We're going to break down my favorite money lines and strikeout props across the night over at FanDuel Sportsbook and send you off into the weekend, hopefully on a winning note. We shall see on that. But Going pretty good about this slate, so we'll see how things play out over at FanDuel for today. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire. Here to preview tonight's MLB slate, breaking down my favorite bets on the money line and strikeout props based on the odds over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Did want to mention the schedule for next week. As mentioned, I am out all of next week, but we still have shows here. Talked about this yesterday with Austin Swain. He'll be filling in for me Monday and then Wednesday through Friday. No show on the 4th because of the holiday. So four shows still next week via Austin, Tom Vecchio covering for me on uh, the solo shot as well. So all the typical shows will still be available in the podcast feed. Now, they will not be on a uh, FanDuel YouTube page or the FanDuel TV Plus app because I will be out and I'm the only one who knows how to run the video software. So we'll pick that back up uh, for the solo shot post all-star break and for covering the spread the Monday of the all-star break. So again, we'll still have podcasts, but only over on the podcast feed for that time. Also no Rob Friedman for today. He is traveling this week and I'm out next week. So we'll pick back up with Rob pitching ninja uh, the Friday after the all-star break, which will be a fun way to get back into it. With all the teams back in action, likely a lot of aces there too. So that will be a delight as always. As for today, we'll dive into the MLB slate, breaking down my favorite bets here in just one second. But first, baseball season is in full swing, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. Such a $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So don't miss your chance to snag a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Must a uh, $10 deposit required. A refund issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at fanduel.com slash sportsbook. Fanduel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP, or text the next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800 327 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text OPEN-Y. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's dig in now to Friday's Major League Baseball slate and begin things off with the money lines I like over at FanDuel Sportsbook. The first one has moved a bit since where it was from where it was this morning. That is the Orioles' money line. It was minus 108, now out to minus 112 at FanDuel Sportsbook. As always, we want to be price sensitive. The implied odds of minus 112 are 52.8%. I have the Orioles at 55.3%, so still enough value there for them to be a value uh, by my model. Uh, again, 55.3% for me. The implied odds at this number are 52.8%. And I do understand why the market is here. I understand why the Twins are getting a bit of love. And it's because Pablo Lopez is a very good pitcher who my model likes a lot. But I think the offensive gap between the two teams is pretty large right now. And Dean Kramer, the Orioles starter, is improving. Over his past seven starts, Kramer Kramer has basically ditched his slider, instead leaning more on his cutter. And in that time, that seven-start sample, both his ERA and his skill interactive ERA are below four, which means the results have been good, but the peripherals have also been good, validating what we've seen from a results perspective. 
Kramer has had some tough matchups sprinkled in there, and the Twins right now are not that. I think they will be long term because they've gotten enough good, talented batters who I think we should expect them to be better in the long run, but they're not there right now. A lot of strikeouts to this team's not putting the ball in play enough, and it's been a tough go of it. I think the Orioles are the better team in this game once you account for starting pitching, offense, et cetera, et cetera. And once you account for home field, the Twins are being treated as a better team here. So to me, I want to ride at the Orioles. I do think they're a very good, talented baseball team. Would obviously check around to see if you can still get a minus 108 out there somewhere. But even at minus 112, I do think there is value in the Orioles there. So they'll be the first money line I like for tonight. The second one is a true slap fight out at Coors Field. It is between the Rockies and the Tigers. This one has also moved a bit. It is currently the Rockies plus 102, the money line against the Tigers. It was plus 106 earlier on, but even a plus 102, I am okay with that uh, for the Rockies here taking on the Tigers. The implied odds of plus 102 are uh, 50 or, or uh, 49.5%. My model has the Rockies pretty decently above that. They're above 50%. So value for me here. And I think I was a bit surprised to see this one where it is because I went in thinking maybe I'll show value on the Tigers because my model is not super enthusiastic about Austin Gomber. But the Rockies are a more competent offense now with CJ Chrome being back, and they're more competent against righties than they are against lefties. Facing a righty in Michael Lorenzen tonight, who has pitched really well this year. Part of that, though, has been thanks to a healthy number of good matchups he has had. Pitching in the AL Central, He's gotten a lot of softer opponents, and that's been a plus for Lorenzen as far as looking at his results. I do think that he's good. I'm just not sure he's as good as the results have shown thus far. When Lorenzen has faced tougher teams, we've seen the results fall off. And obviously, the Rockies are not tough. They're not a good, not a tough matchup by any means, but pitching, of course, is tough. So my model does have the Rockies' favor here, even with this being a plus 102 now versus plus 106. I do still show value there. If it gets to uh, where the Rockies are like minus 105 or so, that's probably where I start to back off. The Rockies, uh, for me, 52.3% to win. So still a bit of wiggle room, but minus 105 or so, I'm backing off at that point. Plus 102, still a good bet by my numbers. The Rockies, a fine bet uh, in my eyes. The third money line I like for tonight is going to be in this Yankees versus Cardinals match. Obviously, the Yankees trending back up once again, and they're facing a lefty, a Matthew Lee Baratore, which is a good thing for them because they're a much better offense against lefties than against righties. But I do show value in the Cardinals here with their money line at minus 108 right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. And again, it's another one that surprised me a bit because I'm not super high on Lee Baratore, not just because he's a lefty, which is, again, the preferred spot for the Yankees, but also because... He's had decreased velocity over his past four starts. And the peripherals for Liberator in that sample are pretty bad. So I have a low rating on him, but I still have the Cardinals win odds at 54.4%. Their implied odds are 51.9%. For all the issues that the Cardinals have had, and there are a lot of them, the offense is still for the most part, come through with a 110 WRC+. plus. That 110 number applies both overall and against righties on the current active roster. They're facing Luis Severino. He's had issues of his own uh, since he came off the IL this year. And obviously, he did show some life last time out in a very tough matchup. So maybe Severino is getting back to being the Severino of old, and maybe that's why I'm showing value on the Cardinals here, undervaluing Severino as he gets back to his typical form. Regardless, I do think this one should be basically a coin toss on a neutral field, but it's in St. Louis. So to me, that should slant things toward the Cardinals. So I do like the Cardinals money line again, minus 108 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. I've been at 54.4%, enough wiggle room there to feel good about the Cardinals in betting their money line for tonight. The final one is a bit of a longer shot. So I understand if you don't want to ride with me on this one, all the other bets have at least 50% odds of cashing. This one does not. That is the Royals taking on the Dodgers. It is unnerving to go here, but I do think the Royals are the proper side in this game. Their money line is plus 184. So as always, make sure you're scaling your bets to account for the fact that the odds this bet cashes are lower than the odds that the other bets cash, and you don't need to go as hard in order to spin a good profit from betting this one. Always account for the odds of bet hits, your margin for value, and stuff like that when you're allocating the bet size for the bet you are placing. Alec Marsh is making his debut for the Royals here, and 
he walked too many guys in the minors, so not a flawless profile, but did get some ground balls, did get strikeouts at a decent clip. He also got a lot of whiffs. Like his swinging strike rate in both double A AA and triple A this year was awesome, which generates some hope that maybe the strikeouts can translate to the majors. He's facing Bobby Miller. Bobby Miller, mixed results so far in the majors, but doesn't seem to be a top-level ace. We need to fear when we're getting plus 184 on a team at home. The Royals, I don't think, are a good team. The Dodgers are, obviously, but the, the Royals do have a solid bullpen behind Marsh, and this line is massive. So I have the Royals' win odds above 40%. The implied odds of plus, plus 184, 35.2%. Still about 5 percentage points of cushion there. So... I understand if you don't want to go here again, this is the lowest probability bet on the board for tonight for me, but I think there's value here. So I do want to ride at the Royals plus 184. I think the market fully encapsulates how bad they are, which allows us to bet on them here today. Just kind of make an odds play. Again, I get it if you don't want to come with. Very fair. I understand, but it is a good value for tonight. So the four money lines we're eyeing for today, the Rockies plus 102, the Cardinals minus 108, Royals plus 184, and the Orioles at minus 112, all those lines available right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Also do have three strikeout props I like for tonight. The first one is going to be in uh, the Giants versus the Mets game. Carlos Carrasco is starting for the Giants. Alex Cobb coming up the IL uh, for Carlos Carrasco starting for the Mets. Alex Cobb coming up the IL for the Giants. And I want to go with Carrasco here going under four and a half strikeouts at plus 112 on him. Carrasco... It's not a low strikeout matchup facing the Giants. They are a team that will whiff, but they're a very good offense too. When you take them out of San Francisco, they can be an offense that can hurt you. And that gives you a path to an under, where if he just struggles against a good offense, that could get you an under there. But Carrasco also has not been a high strikeout guy this year. I think the most relevant sample on Carrasco is his past six starts, because in his second start off the IL, his velocity shot up. So... We can look at those past six starts with the VLO being relevant. And in that time, Carrasco has hit the over on this prop just once. Part of that could be because he had just two home games in that time, but did go under in both those home games. And his strikeout rate in the span is 16.7%. 16.7% is not a number you expect on a prop of four and a half. Now, the Wiss have been there, uh, especially last time out. But even in that one, he hit the over by just a half strikeout. I also have a low pitch count projection on Carrasco because he has not hit 90 pitches since May 25th. That was his second game off the IL. Good velo there, but since then, they have not given him a ton of leash. There are some factors that align to make this market make sense. I don't think it is a nonsensical market because most markets aren't going to make sense, but I under, I still think I like the under here. Under Carrasco, four and a half strikeouts, plus 112 right now at FanDuel. Again, it is not a low strikeout matchup. He is at home. There are reasons to think maybe this is, uh, I understand why it's at four and a half, but to me, uh, with Carrasco's strikeout projection, I think at 3.9 for today. Yeah, 3.91 for Carrasco. I do want to take the under a plus money at uh, uh, plus 112 under four and a half. Other two strikeout props I like for tonight are both in the same game. That is going to be in the late game. The Rays taking on the Mariners, and unfortunately, they're both not fun because they are both unders. Um, this one has moved a bit. Uh, one of them did, but I think it's okay still where it's at. Let's begin with the more firm one. That's Shane McClanahan under six and a half strikeouts at plus 102. This is partly just kind of a play on McClanahan's health because he had that back injury last time out, and you don't really know if he'll get a full leash there. And that's always a concern with the guy. Uh, maybe he's they've said the whole time that they expect him to go. They've said that he feels good. He didn't want to leave that game, which I think matters too. So I understand maybe writing that off entirely. But I've got him projected below that, even without accounting for that too much. I do have a lower pitch count projection for him as a result of the back injury, but that's the one tweak I've made to account for that within my model for today. Even before the back injury, though, McClanahan was not like bathing in strikeouts. His strikeout rate in his past 10 starts is 24.4%, uh, focusing on that sample because he's thrown fewer curveballs in that span. So 24.4% strikeout. He did still go over six and a half strikeouts and five out of nine full starts in that span, but he hit the over in just two out of five road starts. So 
when he goes in the row, maybe a slight downgrade there. And when he did go over, he was typically getting seven. So just over by a half strikeout. The Mariners are a high strikeout team. I don't want to hide that fact. Uh, they love to strike out against lefties. So we could see McClanahan hit the over here, even without getting a full 96 or whatever pitches for tonight. But I think that with the back injury being in play and with the fact that he wasn't getting a ton of strikeouts before that, I think we got two paths to an under here. And I always do like that, especially when it's a plus money. So plus one or two under six and a half strikeouts from McClanahan. That to me makes him a good bet for today. The Bryce Miller strikeout prop has declined quite a bit. It was minus 136 earlier on this morning. And that was then minus 142. It's now minus 150, which means his implied is going under a 60%. I'm getting pretty close to the point where I back off here, but I had Miller projected for 4.48 strikeouts. So what I would do is shop around, see if you can get under five and a half at a better number than minus 150. It's an okay bet at minus 150, but we're really, really close to the point where the juice may not be worth the squeeze. Uh, I think the reason why I was on this one and the reason why I would still shop around, try to find under five and a half at better than minus 150 is that we know the Rays have power, but they're also not a high strikeout team. 21.4% strikeout rate on the current active roster against righties. So Miller could struggle in a tough matchup, or he could be fine, but still not get strikeouts. That's why I feel okay laying a decent amount of juice here. Now, is minus 150 above decent? Yes. So I would shop around. I don't hate it at minus 150, but... I think it's kind of like the Royals one where if you want to leave it off your bet slip, I wouldn't blame you. It's not as good of a value as it was earlier on. So that's more of a borderline one. But I do feel good about McClanahan under six and a half at plus one or two. And I do feel good about Carrasco under four and a half at plus one twelve. So hopefully gives you a good enough platter of stuff to target for tonight across money lines and strike strikeout props for this robust Friday slate. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Once again, next week, only the podcast version of the show will be up. So search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Subscribe there if you like what you hear. Leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and on, and, uh, on Spotify as well. Thank you in advance to Austin Swain for filling in for me here and Tom Vecchio for filling in over on the solo shot. If you got questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. I admittedly will not be checking Twitter very often often during the move, but hey, you know, whatever. Feel free. I might get back to you eventually, uh, but just will be a little bit MIA. Uh, so I'll be carrying boxes and a lot of stuff for the next couple of days. But regardless, make sure you check out uh, the Covering the Spread podcast feed and more for good stuff next week as well. If you want some thoughts on Formula One in uh, Austria or NASCAR in Chicago, did talk about that on yesterday's show as well to also talk free agency with Austin Swain there. So find that over on the Covering the Spread podcast feed, the FanDuel YouTube page, and on FanDuel TV+. Plus. Want to wish you all a happy 4th of July in advance. Have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy next week as well, and I'll talk to you on the Monday of the MLB All-Star break. Have a fantastic time, and good luck with your bets until then. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 